So what do you think our hope is? We're not left, the race was not left without hope. Now this goes, to, how you answer this question reveals immediately what law lens you look through, what model you ascribe to, what you believe the problem with sin is that sin caused, that the plan of salvation was designed to fix. As soon as you answer this question, you're revealing a whole lot about how you see reality around you. What would be necessary to save a species that is now deviant from how God designed it to actually function and operate and live? Does, does, pardon? Restoration to the original. Yes. Does that sound like a legal problem? A courtroom situation? A adjudication? No. So keeping on with the quote. And the question, left without hope, by infinite love and mercy, the plan of salvation had been design, devised and a life of probation was granted. Pause. Before I go on to the next sentence. Probation. Whoa. Wow. Then wait, maybe we're back in a court now. You're on probation. Do we hear that word and you immediately jump to human law room situations here? Oh, we're on probation. We, we're guilty, but we're on probation. Is that how you hear that? Or is it more some other type of meaning to probation. You, you get hired at a new job and your first three months you're on probation. Does it mean something other than a courtroom, a legal process? How do you hear that? Here's the next, next sentence. To restore in man the image of his maker, to bring him back to the perfection in which he was created, to promote the development of body, mind, and soul, that the divine purpose in his creation might be, might, might be realized. Notice again, we're restoring mind, body, and soul. The divine purpose in creation might be realized. This was to be the work of redemption. Does that sound legal to you? It doesn't sound legal, does it? In fact, legal theories of salvation, I'm going to suggest to you, when you hear them, do you, when you hear the legal theories of salvation put out so often, do you immediately think of things like perfecting man's body, mind, and soul, and restoring him to God's image. That's what that's teaching me right now. Is that what you hear? I'm going to suggest to you the legal theories of salvation obstruct his true plan. It makes it hard to see. It actually leads people into a false security of believing they have legal accountability of some deeds done in books in heaven when they're not actually even in connection with God's plan to restore in them his design. Love, the basis... Continue on with the quote, last paragraph. Love, the basis of creation and of redemption is the basis of true education. What do you hear in that statement? Character change. Yeah, character change. What kind of law? Is there a law being described? Do you hear law here in this statement? What kind of law? The law of worship? Law of creation? Design law? Protocols upon which reality is built? The principle of giving, which is the principle of love that we already talked about all life. Okay? This is, the pl this is made plain. Next words in the sentence. In the paragraph, this is made plain in the law that God has given as the guide of his life. The first of the great commandments, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. To love him, the infinite, the omniscient one, with the whole strength and mind and heart means the highest development of every power. It means that in the whole being, the body, the mind, as well as the soul, the image of God is restored. Notice this law... This being described here is not a system of rules to be kept in order to have legal accountability. It is a design protocol in the same way the laws of health work. To exercise your muscles, they get stronger. So what does it mean to be in the image of God? It means to love, to give of yourself, to seek the benefit of others, to look outward. Can we have the image of God restored in us without having the law of love restored in us. No, we cannot. No. Can we have God's law of love restored if we cling to the imperialistic law practices that were taught in so many religious circles? I'm going to suggest that we can't. In fact, I'm going to suggest that holding to that old system is what is impairing this organization from filling the message of taking the final message of mercy, its mission of taking the final message of mercy to the world. Amen. So what do you think about this quote? Adam and Eve were formed in God's image, but Satan worked constantly to destroy the divine similitude. The holy pair yielded to the temptation, and God's image was obliterated. Christ put his hand a second time to the work. He would recreate human beings. And this is uh, found in Christ's Tramp, page 221. What do you think this means, he would recreate human beings? How 
Think this through. Adam and Eve sin. The human species is now infected with a, with a terminal condition, a corruption of the design. They're, they're, they're heading towards an eternal death. God, Christ is going to set his hand to the work again to recreate human beings. How's he going to do it? How's he going to achieve this? Is he going to reach down out of the dirt, create a new body out of the dirt, breathe in the nostrils, new the breath of life, and create a new being? Is this how he's going to do it? You all sleep in here today. He sends, he sends his spirit into us to recreate our spirit of worship. And then but we become transformed, as she mentioned before, the, the law of worship. Okay, so if that was necessary, and I'm not disagreeing that the spirit is definitely involved working in our heart, was there something that the spirit actually needed in order for the spirit to be able to access and utilize in order to achieve that? We have to be willing to accept it. Our participation, our willingness, what else? A human being and to restore the law into a human brain. There we go. See, if, if we go with just the Holy Spirit working in our hearts, then what's the need of Christ coming? Or was the Christ himself say, it's expedient for you that I go because when I go, the Spirit will come and he will take all that's mine and make it known to you. So the Holy Spirit's actually taking something from Christ to achieve what you've described. Yes? I think there are many things we don't understand, but the degenerate DNA that the human beings have has to be corrected. How is it done? God's way. No question there's many things we don't understand. So many things. I, that, that's really, absolutely. You know, sometimes we, can, we can't say how God works, but he does what is necessary, and it transcends our human understanding. And I think it's so meaningful at times when the disciples, for example, were arguing who's going to be the greatest, he puts a child in the middle of them, and he says, unless you're converted like the child, you'll never get to heaven. A child does not figure out the details. The, the child experiences a relationship in ways that we can't even define. And but Jesus said to his apostles in John, in John 15, 15, I no longer call you servants, rather I call you friends, because servants don't understand their master's business, and I've made everything known to you. So while it is true that we need to have that childlike faith, it's also true Christ has called us to be his understanding friends. And so there's an aspect for us to grow up and comprehend. And I think Jesus really appreciates those of us who want to grow up and comprehend and be intelligent participants with him. But you said something interesting about the DNA. To be totally restored, we will have perfect DNA. There's no question about it. When does the Bible say the DNA gets restored? The moment, the twinkling of an eye. When this mortal puts on immortality and this corruption puts on incorruption, we don't get new biology until the second coming. That's, that's for sure. We absolutely. And how God creates new biology? That would be interesting to ask him what method he used to do that. But that's not what we're waiting for here on earth today. That's not what we're promised. We get, we said we get a new heart and right spirit. I'll write my law on the inner man. I'll write my law on the heart and mind. I'll circumcise your heart with the, with the Holy Spirit. We, get a new, we take the heart of stone out, put in the heart of flesh. We are reborn, recreated. All these metaphors of scripture are not talking about DNA stuff anymore. If you use a computer metaphor, remember the computer metaphor, the, body t the scripture tells us we are body, soma, soul, psyche, psychiatry, psychology, individuality, software, so hardware, software, and pneuma, panuma, spirit, energy. We are hardware, software, and energy. Body, soul, and spirit. We don't get a new body new hardware. We don't get hardware upgrades until the second coming. But we can have new software, new minds, new motives, new attitudes, new beliefs, new ways of understanding, a heart that had loves God and loves others. And Revelation actually describes these people still in the bad hardware when it says in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11, these are they who do not love their life so much as to shrink from death. Think operationally. Wait a minute. Okay. They don't love their lives so much as to shrink from death. The primary driver in them is no longer survival of the fittest. Watching out for number one, protecting self at all costs. These are people who greater love is no man that he give his life for a friend. That the, the, the operating drive of me first has been rewritten with the operating drive of love for God and others. Transformation of heart. And those who have the transformation of the heart then get the DNA upgrades, the, so the hardware upgrades at the second coming. Yes? 
not to, well, but part of the hardware has to be corrected now. Our thought pathways, what we dwell on, how we, how we think, what we find pleasurable is changed. Absolutely. There are neurobiological wiring patterns that happen, but they're happening still in a degraded humanity, not in a perfected humanity, not in a glorified humanity. But, but many people expect that to be a poof, a magical whatever is going to happen whenever we become Christ's children, and yet we have to grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord and Savior. Absolutely. Other qu comments on this? This is really profound stuff. What do you expect? Our expectations have a lot to do with our experience and what we get. If you don't expect a new heart and right spirit, if you don't expect to have new desires and new motives from a trust relationship with Jesus Christ, if you expect to continue to fall and commit the same behavior patterns of, of fear and distrust over and over again, then there's no victory and we go down the trails that Christianity has been in for the last 2,000 years of seeking various legal solutions through whether it's penance, whether it's um, indulgences, whether it's confessions, whether it's uh, any other types of thing we're looking for. We're looking for something to account for the bad stuff rather than something to transform the person to have a new heart and new motives. And it's our expectations. Do we expect transformation through an indwelling spirit or do we expect no transformation, just legal accountability? Yes. The people in the sea of glass and the neural multiple are described as overcomers. They're not described as forgiven or legally pardoned. And they They're overcame by? The blood of the Lamb. And the word of their word testimony. Of the yes. What does this mean? What is the blood of the Lamb? Blood of the Lamb is symbolic. This is not red corpuscles. We're not talking, um, you know, drinking, uh, uh, you know, from the, from, the, from the blood bank here. When Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, he's not talking cannibalism. So when we, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, what is it referring to? The life of Christ. The life of Christ. And Christ said it's the, see, what penal substitution theology does, it corrupts our mind to think that the blood application is applied to record books or to courtrooms to pay penalties or to erase records. But Christ said, unless you drink my blood, he's applying it into the heart and mind of the believer. We must internalize the life of Christ. As Peter says, we must be partakers of the divine nature. It's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. This is putting the blood of Christ where it belongs. The life of Christ is internalized into the actual living being. So we hit new hearts and new motives. This is the work of the Spirit you mentioned earlier, taking what Christ achieved in our behalf and worked out in his humanity and reproducing it in us. This is literal. And if we don't expect it, we don't believe it, we believe it just, then we don't achieve it. We don't experience it. We're not intelligent participants with our, with our creator. Comments? Yes. I was going to say that uh, the marvelous thing is that we have brain plasticity. Yes. And by it, with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, we can choose certain thought patterns and choices. And that reinforces new neurons development and by neglecting some pathways they get pruned off. Exactly right.